Kyle Klingman with Track Wrestling. Guess who we got? We got two-time NAIA wrestling champion from Mary. He was a four-time All-American, reached the 2000 Olympic trials where he had an epic battle with Terry Brands. It's Kerry Bowmans. How are you, Kerry? I'm great, Kyle, man. I appreciate it. How you doing, buddy? Doing great, man. And anytime we talk about a wrestling journey, I'm always fascinated with the beginning parts. And when you begin in Louisiana, that's probably not the fertile breeding ground for great wrestling success. But you found it. What was wrestling like in Louisiana when you first started out? You know, obviously when you're in it, you think it's it's the cream of the crop, you know, so I'm here wrestling and, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm competing with guys in my state and doing very well with them. And, you know, at that point, man, I was, I was naive, I guess, to the rest of the country of how good wrestling really is, you know, and uh, so it, my mindset was always I was I was good, I guess. <laughs> but now looking back, there's definitely a disparity between the level not so much anymore i think the southern states are catching up a little bit just from a there's some coaches down in louisiana now that are you know really building up the state and have been for years now so but there's definitely a disparity from an experience standpoint you know and from the competitive i guess experience is what i'm saying so yeah but it's uh, you know it's definitely a difference but like i said back when i was wrestling in louisiana it i didn't know the difference and you know i just kind of felt like I can compete with anybody, you know, no, not knowing any better, but just doing it. Yeah. Nick Corey wrote a piece that I found fascinating. And one of the lines I liked was that being naive was to your advantage. Elaborate on what you mean by that. I guess in the simplest form, I just felt like, uh, I felt like I was, I was good. I was good enough to compete with anybody, you know, even with the lack of experience and technical knowledge that, that I had at the time. Um, and I just felt like I felt competitive enough to be able to wrestle with anybody in the country, you know, and, and, uh, that's kind of what I meant by being naive. I didn't know, I didn't know that I didn't know the proper techniques, right? I just knew that I can be competitive, you know? So that was, that was my naivety, I guess, or he's having even a word. I was naive in that sense, so. What made you think, though, that you could go to the next level? Was there something inside? Did you, did you feel something that you knew that you could be good in this sport? You know, I, I think there's a lot of little things that happened throughout my, you know, early birth of wrestling career, you know, I think, uh, you know, one, obviously just being competitive and wanting, wanting to win. And, you know, that was, that was the first, I had the desire to do it. And then, you know, I had people, you know, just really just put into my life, um, every step of the way, whether it was my high school coach or, you know, after that it was, you know, Willie Getz and he was in new Orleans at the time. Um, and he was a huge part of me kind of, he just kind of breathed into me, hey, man, you're good, you're good, you're good, because he, he was on a high level, and uh, he was down in New Orleans coaching, so he was really probably the initial birth of me, you know, really believing, man, I can go compete out state and, you know, get on a different stage here, and, you know, he kind of sewed that into me, and I'm always grateful for him for that, and he just, uh, he, he navigated me a little bit, as much as he could in New Orleans, and you know, it was, he was probably the real source of me continuing, continuing on, uh, knowing that I can continue on in the college. So I would say he was the, the initial and probably most important uh, piece and pushed me over the top there. So, First time I met you was when you came into Waterloo, Iowa for Willie Gadsden's funeral. And I can remember that moment of just all of these people coming in for the funeral. It's just, you had no idea that Willie had that many people that knew him. If you had to describe Willie Gadsden, so it's Kyvin Gadsden's father, of course, who passed away of cancer. How would you describe Willie in his presence? Man, he, to me, I mean, I can only speak with my personal opinion, right? Uh, to me, he was, man, he was a father figure, you know? He wasn't just a coach. Um, he was, he, he literally cared. I mean, he literally, would give you what he had, physical, mental, emotional, so that you can succeed and be better, you know? And, and uh, so 
he's he's a great man you know he's you know always be one of those guys that's a pillar in my life you know i know who i am because of him and uh you know so he was he's he was a wonderful man a great man beautiful man i mean and you know, I wish he was still here, obviously, but, you know, God takes people when they need to take them. So it's, uh, but he has, you know, watching his son compete and he's got his other boy, Jerry, we keep in touch a little bit. And man, just watching Kyvin compete is, I look at him like, man, he's his dad, looks just like him and just, you know, has that same mentality of, I'm going to get you and I'm going to grab you and you're going to feel it, you know, and then, you know, so and I kind of went off on a spin there, but he, he means a lot, man. He was a great man. He he was literally he was a great man. Gave me the shirt off his back so that I can I can continue to do well in the sport. So, so you wrote twenty letters to D one programs wanting to have them look at you, and none responded. And so Mary was the only program that felt like they could uh, get you in. Well, you know what's funny about Mary is uh, in nineteen. 19- Oh, was it 88 whenever the world team trials uh were in pensacola florida i believe this they had the junior world team trials going on at the same time i was just like i'm going wrestling and stuff or it was like a, a mini tournament for the junior level you know and i was like, i'm going wrestling and uh so i went and wrestled in florida in pensacola florida while the trials were going on and and um milo trusty was there with monty his son and a couple other guys the steiners were probably there um, with Milo at the time too, um, you know, and he just kind of, I don't know, he just, I caught his eye, I guess. And, you know, he, he watched me compete throughout the seat, throughout that tournament. And you know, I can't remember if I placed or if I didn't place, I know I did very well. And, um, he just came up to me after one of the matches and he said he liked me and, you know, he co- he's a coach in North Dakota. And I was like, North Dakota. No, nah, I don't think so, man. That's that's too cold for me. But he he kept on it. And uh, one of my teammates, high school teammates, was a senior. And he went up to Mary, had a good experience with Milo, and then uh, Milo just stayed in touch. And you know, I still wasn't I, even at my senior year, and I kept hope alive that I can go D one or somewhere else other than North Dakota. But he stayed on me, man. He was persistent, and uh, I appreciate that. You know. In hindsight, do you think you could have gone D1? You know, you, you always say shoulda, woulda, coulda, or I could have done that, I could have done this. But, you know, at that point in my career, I was where I needed to be. I, I'm 100% sure. Um, you know, I think a D1 program, I probably would have been competitive. And, you know, when you got to compete against guys that, you know, you go to you go in a room and I'm learning in college still. I'm still learning how to wrestle. You know, I I'm not by no means am I refined, you know, so I'm still figuring this sport out. And I think NAI for me was good for my ego, it was good for my confidence. You know, um, I think a D1 program, you know, realistically looking at my level, if I would have went division one at a good high level program. You know, because I was thinking, oh, you, I was like, man, I, I'm going to go right there. They're close to home. You know, I'm not too far. I can I can go there or OSU. It's like, I'll go walk on if I have to. But, you know, it just worked out good for me. I think I would have gotten, uh, I think I would have gotten, not lost, but, man, it would have been, I think it would have been difficult for me realistically, you know, to, to keep that confidence level. And I was competitive and I can push, but, you know, what a meat grinder D1 is, man. Now, some of those rooms are just, they're just tough. They're just tough, you know, always. So well, you came in, you got third at 118, I believe, in 1990, and then I think you redshirted, and then you got seventh in 92 as a sophomore. What were those first three years like? Do you feel like it was it was a tough transition at that point? I would say my freshman year was, you know, I had actually a really good freshman year, and. Um, and I was I was very close to making the finals that year, and 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 you know, and I had a tough competition winning it. But man, I was I was just wrestling very well. And um, the transition piece that was hard for me was being away from home. You know, it was it was definitely a culture shock. Um, I'm, I'm literally my hometown is on, almost on the Gulf of Mexico, and now I'm up in Bismarck, North Dakota. <laughs> it was just a 
for me, it was a tough transition. So I, after my freshman year, I actually came back home and sat out a, sat out a year. I didn't wrestle and um, just kind of went to, to the university here at UL. It's called UL, the Raging Cajuns. Um, you know, I came here for, for a semester, started working. And again, Milo's persistence, he called me back and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go. So that first year was my hardest year by far, um, just growing up and maturing. And then uh, second year, you know, when I went back, uh, I realized, man, I have, I have to dive in. That was kind of a, a watershed moment for me when I was home. And I was like, man, I'm going really nowhere. Wrestling is what I was meant to do. I was supposed to do that. I need to go back and finish up and, and just do what I can and do, be the best that I can at it. So thank God Milo gave me that opportunity again. And uh, so sophomore year, I came back and that was another tough transition because I had sat out for a year. I didn't do any wrestling whatsoever. And also I'm getting back in it. And Milo was tough. He was a hard nosed dude, man. And he expected a lot. He gave a lot, but he expected a lot. And, and uh, man, it was, my body was just, it was, it was adjusting. It was, I was like, man, this is tough. But I stuck it out, you know, ended up taking seventh, you know, I had a couple of knee surgeries that year and, you know, it, it worked out all right though. And then you won it the next couple of years, you yeah. won it your junior and senior year. Did something just take off for you? Did something click? You know, I, I look back at that time, I think it was, again, it was just me wanting to, I was competitive. I, I wanted to be on the top of the podium. I wanted to win. You know, I didn't want to go there and just be an All-American and go to school and get a degree. And, you know, that wasn't in my nature. I always wanted to be on the top of the podium. I just always saw myself there and I never saw myself any, any lower. And, and so I think even in the summers, I would come home and I wouldn't wrestle, which was, that's what I'm saying. At Division One, I, I would have gotten eaten up, man. It would have just been bad. So I'd come home, I'd work, you know, I would spend time with my family and, and then they'd go back to college and start all over. So, you know, I think it was, I just had a, I had a desire to win. I wanted to win. Milo gave me the tools to win. And, um, you know, he just kind of allowed me to go and, hey, man, here's what you need. Here's what you got to do. And he pushed me, though. He he definitely would push me. He, I, I don't, I don't know why, but he would, uh, he, he pushed me hard. He, he'd grab me extra. He would make me stay longer. He, you know, maybe he saw something, you know, and he was just like, no, nah, let's go. You're going some more. I was like, damn. Damn, that's tough, man. So, you know, from that from that point, man, he um, he kind of guided me into that that first national title for sure, and a second. But he for sure he he said, "You're gonna win. You're gonna do it. And this is how we're gonna do it." And I did. So it was good. Take me through your senior year. Just read about this again from Nick Corey's article. A first period tech fall, dude. I mean, yeah. what, what happened there? <laughs> Ooh, man, I think the stars aligned on that one, buddy. I mean, the guy that I was competing against, Willie Payette, he's out of Wyoming. He's tough, too. He was tough, man. I mean, it just worked out well. I, I remember it. Every takedown that I got, it was a takedown to the to his back. So it was five points every time, man. It was, it was insane. I would hit a high crotch and take him to his back, and get five points. He'd fight off, get away, take down to his – I mean, it was – how, I mean, it was, like I said, the stars aligned. That's all I can say, because that was, I couldn't even believe it. I got off the mat, and I was like, I did laps around the stadium, man. I was like, I, I was just jazzed up, and I was like, oh, my gosh, what just happened? Holy goodness. So it was, it was fun, man. I still remember it. It was, it was a neat experience, you know. It was, it was impressive to me. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe that happened. So, so what was the final was, score? Do you remember? Jeez, he had four escapes and, you know, or whatever it was, four or five escapes, and I had, you know, five or six takedowns. So that was about it, you know. <laughs> I, I mean, I wish I had the film. I, I don't even know if it exists or not, but I wish I could find it. If they had it, that would be pretty interesting to watch. <laughs> so that was 1994. So if we take that gap, you have 94, and then all the way to get into the Olympic trials in 2000, what happened? Did you think that you could do well internationally? How do you make that transition as an NAI guy? Because as you know, 
not a great success rate coming out of NAI to reach the highest level internationally. The only guy I can think of is John Peterson and then some other guys that were international that uh, went the NAI route. But how did you think that you could do international at that point? Well, it's funny you ask, you know, again, one of my pillars in my life, Willie Gatson, you know, I, I graduated college. I, I, my mom and my sisters were living in Houston, Texas at the time. And so I went back down to Houston, Texas, you know, over the summer and not really knowing what I was going to do. I had a degree and I wanted to wrestle, but I wasn't sure how, and, you know, and Willie Gatson reached out and he got the job at Eastern Michigan. And uh, he was like, Hey, I got a, I got a position. You want to come and, you know, help me out and I'll continue. You continue to wrestle and I'll, I'll help coach you. And, and that was for me, that was like, no brainer. Absolutely, man. I'm coming. I don't care. I packed my bags. I mean, what small bags I had and I got on the road and I got out of Texas and I'm going, I'm going back going up North again, going to Michigan. So, you know, Willie Gatson stepped in in, in an important time in my life. And again, he was there for me and, and just kind of help navigate me where I needed to be. So went up to Eastern Michigan and volunteered for the first couple of years and lived with Willie. You know, I was lived in his apartment with him. So he was sacrificing too. His family was still in Iowa. And um, I looked at that and I was like, man, that's, that's for me. I was like, man, cause I'm family. I'm a big family guy. He's, and he is too. And he was, he was sacrificing, man, and he, I could see it in his face. He wanted, you know, he did all he could to make that program great, and he did, man. I mean, golly, I think about that Eastern Michigan program and what he did with it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled by what he did with it. It, it was amazing to watch those men, those young men trans, transform themselves into champions. I was like, what? He, he, he was a he was a miracle worker, man, by no means. And, and then went out to the OTC, didn't you? Trained out yep. there? Yeah. After Eastern Michigan, I was there for three years, maybe. They opened up that residence program at the Olympic Training Center. And, you know, I was just really, 96 was my first, I guess, 95, I went to the U.S. Open and got just throttled. You know, 96, I did a lot better. Um, had a good tournament, a good open. I still didn't qualify for the, the trials, but, you know, I had a great tournament. And um, opened up a few eyes, got with the Dave Schultz Wrestling Club at that point. Uh, Nancy Schultz let me come on, and, you know, Willie talked to her, and she was like, yeah, absolutely. So that's when they first started, obviously. And, and so I got on with them, and, you know, uh, the, the Olympic Training Center opened up. I filled out an application, and, they said, yes, come on in. And I'm sure with Nancy and Willie and some pool, they, they, they said, yeah, come on. So I got, I was able to get there, man. Let me tell you, that was, wow, that was, I mean, what can you say? You're living at the Olympic training centers, you're getting paid to wrestle and you know, you're fed, you're, you don't have to worry about bills and electricity and food. And you just, you're there to wrestle and they took care of you like that. And that was, for me, that was a great experience, you know? And that's where your skills just started getting honed during that time. Absolutely, man. I mean, you know, when you win, when you're a four-time All-American in college and you win a couple titles, you think you're good, right? You, this is the naive part again of me. And, you know, I was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good, man. And Well, I go to those first few tournaments and just get throttled, man. After, you know, after my, on the senior level, I'm like, oh, What? I was like, wow, I got a lot to learn. So the Olympic Training Center with Bruce Burnett, you know, f when I first got there, Bruce was there. He's a plethora of knowledge, man. The guy just, he can study film. He can, man, he can just pin, he can pinpoint where you need to put your hand and what you need to do and to, to make a technique successful, you know. And he uh, he sewed into me pretty good. And it was, you know, and I, I, was, I was receptive. You know, I think that's the biggest part is I, I was receptive. You know, I let him so into me, and then obviously Jackson came in, and you know he was another guy to just man. Kevin was uh, another, and just his coaching style was for me. It was perfect, you know. And I really started to take off when Kevin came in, you know, and believed in myself and believed that I can, 
I can beat everybody, you know? So and he sold a lot into me. So it's always amazing when you just think about the, the trajectory of how two people meet at a certain point. So you have a guy that is from Louisiana and NAI goes that route. And then you get the Olympic trials. You got a, a two time world champion, Iowa legend and Terry brands. And you guys meet in the finals. Now, you were on top of the ladder. You didn't have to go through anyone. And you got some great guys. You got Guerrero, you have, who is a three-time NSA champ. You got Mark Ironside, Curler, Terry Brands. Terry Brands meets. How are you prepared for this challenge against a, a real icon in our sport? You know, I was fortunate enough to win that U, the U.S. Open that year. So, yeah, I got to sit out. And I knew, you know, I knew Terry was coming back several months before you know we kind of the buzz was already out and we knew he was going to be coming back and making a making a go at it and you know I'm gonna tell you I was thankful I won that dang tournament because not having to go through all those names you just mentioned was a blessing I mean how can you get through that meat grinder man and, and then go wrestle somebody like a Terry Brands or even if Eric made it you know an Eric Guerrero I mean it's I was grateful and thankful. I was sitting and waiting for those guys to, to beat each other up and get to me. So, you know, my mindset, like any, like it always was, was I can beat anybody. It doesn't matter who it is. I don't care if Terry Brands is a two-time world champ. You know, I respect the heck out of him. I, you know, I looked up to him, you know, as I was wrestling and watched him win. I was like, man, I, I can do that. You know, so he was an inspiration and, and, and still is because – Heck, let's face it, the guy's good, man. He was tough. He was mean. He was always in your face. He, you know, he knew how to win. I mean, it was – for me to wrestle him, I had to shut that off and know that I'm better than him and I can beat him, you know, and that's just the reality. I didn't – I shut off who he was and what he accomplished, and I looked at him as he's my training partner and I got to beat him today, and that's it. You know, that's kind of – that was my mindset – you know, the whole time, you know, even watching those guys wrestle in the mini tournament, you know, him and Eric had some battles and, and I didn't know who was going to come out on top of that one, you know, you know, you kind of, you kind of, I just, it didn't matter. I couldn't train for Terry because I had all those other guys that I had to think about. So I just trained like I knew how to train and whoever came out had to, had to beat me. That's how I looked at it, you know. We're a sport driven by the B1 athletes that come out just by nature of it. Those are the ones that get the most attention. Did you feel like people were pulling for Terry? I mean, how can you not, you know? I mean, it's – he's proven, you know, as far as uh, as far as far what he's accomplished. I mean, man, I mean, he, he's proven. I mean, yeah, I, I – do I think that played it out in the matches? No. Do I think that, you know, from a, just a emotional standpoint and from a, a, I guess, a comfort level, I'm sure um, Terry Brands was the, the pick, you know, without a doubt, you know, in most people's eyes. And for me, train and I kind of knew that but again I had to shut that stuff off because that's just little distractions that that does nothing positive for you it just kind of tears you down a little bit so I couldn't think that you know and you know it, there's definitely bias I mean why not I would want a two-time world champion being on the Olympic team you know <laughs> and as to, compared to an unproven you know NAI guy I mean that's that's just yeah absolutely you would want that pedigree on the team you know that's just how it flows so that's okay and then the moment I always think about is when it goes into overtime and then Terry you know you go to your back and he calls for the fall but you had a mentality that you went for it instead of just staying back and saying I'm just going to be a victim here you went for it like how did you build that what was your me mentality going into that moment you know so it's funny because you can remember like in a match you know, and all the, the good wrestlers will attest to this. You have strategy, and and sometimes it changes. And you know, and I think my game plan with Terry and wrestling him was worked out pretty well, even in that match. I mean, it was, you know, I wrestled as hard as I could to 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 score more points than him. You know, and we went we were two and we we're two to two. You know, and at that point, you had to you had to score three points to win the match. So 
You know, it went into the the, the sudden victory part of it. And I, going into it, he had I had two cautions against me, and I knew that in my head. I already knew the match how it was playing out, so I knew I had to score. I knew I had to go win that match because if it came down to a hand being raised, it was going to be his. You know, he had the he had the passivities against me, and you know, I I knew that the whole time we we're wrestling in that overtime match. That overtime match, I'm like, man, I got to get it. I have to score. I got to go score. I got to score. I got to score. You know, and at the end there, I saw I know the time was ticking down. You know, I was like, I, it, I am not not gonna go for it. I have to. There is just no way I'm just gonna watch his hand get raised. You know, without even trying to win. You know, so, you know, I hit, and I, I had a nice little duck under to that right side. I, you know, it was one of my moves and one of the things that I was really good at. And, he hit a lot of people on it and Terry knew it and he watched it, he studied it and I knew he knew it. And, you know, he was hand fighting me hard and I thought I saw an opportunity to hit it right at the end there. And he caught me pretty good and caught me with underhooks. And I did, I, and I, my head was stuck underneath him and he had, he had, uh, he had double unders on me and I was on overhooks and I was like, I have to get my head out. So I dug my head out as hard as I could. And I knew I had to lock up his arms and throw him and, that was the only way to win that at that point I couldn't shoot I couldn't do anything else so I I went for it man and you know he caught me he was I mean come on it it was a desperation move at at, at the time and you know I thought I could get it that was really my only option so I went for it man. you know it didn't work out and that's okay have you and Terry talked about those matches since then? no no no, I mean, well, you look at Terry's mentality. I, I, again, I respect him, man. I mean, he's kind of he's a competitor, uh, and I still look up to him. I mean, I really do. He's he's a competitor. Um, I don't. We've never. I mean, we've said hi, and we've you know talked, and but it's not like you know we hold shoulders and buddy buddy and talk about it. You know, it's <laughs> I don't I don't know if Terry would do that. You know, but you know he's cordial to me always. You know, and it's yeah, I don't think we would talk about it what what did that match do for you though because again as an NAIA guy I'm sure there's a lot of people that didn't know who you were did that put you right into instant credibility in the sport yeah I don't know I mean I would I would assume so um you know I knew I knew at that point you know I had so I was getting married you know and you know I did I want to continue? I had a decision to make at that time. You know, I, I haven't gone long. I wasn't in it long, but I was already like, man, I put four more years, man, and to go to an Olympic title. I was like, man, that's that's a lot of training and it's it's a lot of discipline, a lot of sacrifice. And, you know, I had decisions to make and you know, and I went I went another year and you know, trained not as hard as I should have, you know, or, or could have. And yeah, I just didn't want to make the sacrifices, and I knew that. And so that was kind of like for me, people were wanting me to stay, and you know, Jackson wanted me to stay, you know, just but they understood my decision and why I made that decision in 2001 after the trials, you know, to stop. I think I started making it uh, probably after the Olympic trials. I started, I started making those decisions slowly that I was kind of, I think I'm done, man. I think I'm, I've, I've had a run. Could I make that Olympic team in in '04? Maybe, but then you got you know again you got Guerreros and you got Ironsides, you got you know you got all kind of guys that are coming through and getting you know younger and stronger and so yeah I'd say 2000 was my I guess initial turning point where I was like I don't know if I want to go for more years you know I'll take it year by year is what I was doing you know but you wrestled really well at Baltimore at the World Cup in 2001 was that the best you wrestled? Who I was pretty good. I mean, I think between between the trials, the Olympic trials, I think those are two some of my two of my best wrestled matches. You know, with against Terry, from a strategy standpoint, from a focus and mental, you know, not making mistakes standpoint. You know, I made a couple of little mistakes that cost me, but against anybody else, I don't think they would have cost me. You know, and um, so I would say that between those two matches, those are probably some of the best matches ever wrestled, but at the in Baltimore, 
man, I was just, I was on fire. I mean, I was, I can't even explain. I was just, I was on fire. I mean, I was beating some good guys, some high level guys. And, and, um, you know, what, you know, it was fun. I think I enjoyed the time. I think it was, <laughs> I just had a good time because I was wrestling well and I was winning and uh, it made it that much more enjoyable and fun. So I would say that, yeah, between those two, the Olympic trials and that tournament, man, the World Cup, to win the World Cup against those guys, I was, yeah, I was rest, I was definitely wrestling very well. You know? What would you tell NAI wrestlers that want to go to the next level and how you get there? Man, just just know that you can compete with anybody. I mean, it doesn't matter what level it is. Uh, you got to surround yourself around the people that can help you and, and get there. But most importantly, you have to believe. You have to know that you're good enough. You know, and if you want to go to that next level, and it's sacrifices, and you you can't doubt you can't doubt that you can't win. You you got to always believe you can win. You know, and when that doubt creeps in, because it does. Just got to kind of got to brush it off and now nah, I'm good. I can win. Absolutely, I can win. I can beat him, 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 and him. I know I can. And that's just the mentality you got to have. And you got to surround yourself around the right people too, you know, as best you can. Who's more competitive, you or your wife? She played volleyball at Penn State. <laughs> oh, man, without a doubt, her. <laughs> really? Oh God, yeah, dude, absolutely. <laughs> she's super competitive, and it's fun. I mean, she's you want to talk about high level athlete? Shoot, man, she. I can't even. I can't even hold her socks up, man. That she's she's for real. You know, Penn State. I mean, she was a she was a three sport athlete out of high school. Had scholarships for softball, basketball, and volleyball. You know, four I wherever she wanted to go. I mean. What do you do? <laughs> she was, she's tough. She's good. Does she have any good Russ Rose stories? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to share them, but yeah. <laughs> Russ, I know your stories. <laughs> do you get a lot of people that will just make passing comments about the difference in height? All the time. And we love it. It's funny. <laughs> So I, yeah, I mean, I got some, I got some good stories about that too. That is pretty funny. Can you share a yeah, couple of people say? Oh, um, uh, just by the looks, you know. So when we were at the Olympic Training Center, you know, you got to decompress. So we we go out and you know we just we go out and have a good time and be normal people, you know, every once in a while and as best we could. And so it would be myself, Brandon Slay, a couple of gymnasts. You know, they're shorter than me. And then we'd have all these tall, you know, volleyball women. So it would be us and them. And we'd go out and we would, they would walk in and we'd walk in right next to them. We, you know, our chests are out like, yeah, people would just, they would just, they would do, they'd do one of these. <laughs> and the volleyball girls would just be like, yeah, and put their arms around us. Yeah, that's my man. <laughs> so, you know, you're keeping it. That's it was fun. <laughs> so yeah, they would give us some looks all the time, and all they would always, the volleyball girls would have fun with it all the time, and we would too. It was it was a blast. <laughs> we'll end with this. I know that you were on the Dave Schultz Wrestling Club, and going back to that '01 World Cup, I just remember watching you because I happened to be out there for that. Just the the way the crowd responded to you, it felt like you had channeled Dave Schultz and that they were responding to you in that way. Did you meet Dave Schultz and what was his influence on you? No, I never met Dave. Um, that's, I tell you what, you saying that just uh, gave me chills, man. So I appreciate that. I'm humbled by that statement. Um, Cause man, that's, that's huge. Uh, I never met Dave Schultz. You know, he passed away before um, I came in the scene and came on the scene. You know, and again, if given the opportunity, I'm sure Dave would have freaking grabbed me and held on to me and tried to figure out what I was doing. And, you know, because he, from what I know, the coaches that I was part of and got they could be coached by like Ed Giese. Ed Giese was one of, you know, Dave's good friends. And I got to know Ed real well and coached side by side with him for a long time. And, you know, the stories he says about Dave, I'm like, man, 
impressive. <laughs> but I didn't get to meet him. Nancy Schultz, uh, you know, took me in, took me under her wing. And, uh, you know, I think that was for me uh, just listening and being around all these great wrestlers that were around Dave and listening to the stories and just, you know, being in that atmosphere. Come on, man. I mean, who, why wouldn't you want to be? I was, I was just like a fly on the wall, just like amazed and listening and soaking it in as best I could, and, you know, and, and from a wrestling standpoint or a wrestler standpoint, being from Louisiana, I didn't know a lot of wrestlers, you know, growing up. I didn't know, I watched those guys, but I didn't know who they were. Um, you know, at that point, knowing who Dave was and what he accomplished and, and, uh, the things he's done for our sport and the people's lives he's touched, you know, that for me was, I was honored to be able to wrestle for the Dave Schultz Wrestling Club and, uh, you know, and represent them, you know, and I always will, without a doubt, because Nancy's, she's beautiful, she's awesome, man.